last year, in 2019, we count 820 catastrophes internationally, costing about eight, uh, $150 billion. The unfortunate sad part is that only a third of that is insured, i.e. about two-thirds of these losses are carried by individuals and by corporates without insurance. About 52,000 people die annually from natural catastrophe events. If you want to get a feeling for how, th how fast things are changing, of the, of the last 20 years, 18 of them have been the, the warmest years on record. So if you were to draw a graph of the 18 warmest years ever, they were in the last 20. There's a country in the, in the southern uh, Pacific Ocean called Kiribati, which is now pretty much guaranteed to be wiped off the map by the year 2100 due to uh, sea levels rising at three millimeters per year. This country, its biggest dilemma is that their leadership is still in denial about where this will happen. So the scope of the, of the issue is wide, is dramatic. And in this, country, in this continent, we see it even last year with uh, Idai hitting Mozambique. We haven't had such events in many, many years. A thousand people died, a tenth of their GDP was destroyed, and there certainly is evidence that this will return more frequently to our continents. We know that uh, we had the cyclone Idai in Mozambique, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. Estimates that are conservative uh, say that about two billion of infrastructure was lost. But if you look at the two billion infrastructure lost, look at what was actually insured, only 7% of that. So we're sitting with 93% protection gap yeah. for ordinary people. And when you're looking at climate change, you must look at the initial conditions. What is the initial conditions before you talk about adaptation? If you're in Africa, rich in natural resources, we all claim that Africa is rich in natural resources, but very poor in human development. We were talking there about fastest growing economies. You cannot direct, you cannot see the proceeds of economic growth in human development in Africa because inequality is rising, poverty is rising, and because of mass levels of poverty, um, growth is not responsive to mass levels of poverty if you have levels of inequality of the levels we're talking about. And every African country is trying to declare itself a middle income country. Yeah. But within these middle income countries lies existing levels of grotesque inequalities. Now, if you factor in climate change on a landscape like that, the consequences are catastrophic because it means a newly born child is being born into a warmer climate where the risk of disease is much higher, the threats to right to health, education, water, and other resources that requires human development to succeed are not there. And in the face of that calamity, the laziness of business leaders, the laziness of government leaders is frightening because we are seeing spectacular erosion of rights every day. And that's why we say it's intergenerational because the decisions being made by government and business today is a bearing on children who are going to be born 50 years from now. Yeah. By 2050, the levels of warming that are going on in Southern Africa are much higher than anyone than any other region. And for that region in Southern Africa, we're going to face more catastrophic consequences. So if we don't size up and rise up to see climate change as a direct threat to human rights, and I'm not talking about freedom of assembly that government is afraid of, or freedom of expression. I'm talking about scarcity of water, which has a bearing on businesses in Botswana yeah. as a result of the declining dam levels in Gaborone, or the declining hydropower levels in Zambia, where the entire city only sees power for two hours in Lusaka. If you see power, it's very exciting in, in, in Lusaka these days. Uh, I was in East Africa, I was in Kenya. I left a storm of locusts in Ethiopia yeah. and Kenya and arrived here to see a storm of butterflies yes. in Johannesburg. <laughs> and all this extreme weather events have no explanation. If we don't rise up to really combine science and policy with political will, then we're going to have masses of violations such that our populations will rise up against government. The final one is this. If you look at the refugee crisis, the 2019 report says 70 million people were displaced in 2019. This is up from 65 million people in 2016. Every minute, 20 people are being displaced as a result of conflicts across the world, right? If you then factor climate migration, yeah. if you factor people who are moving because of what we saw in Mozambique, the consequences are catastrophic because governments in Africa are not able to adapt to respond to the needs given levels of debt, inertia, and leadership crisis. 
So it's a catastrophic moment that requires us to really reflect on what it means for the globe. Southern African temperatures are rising at a rate, um, twice the global rate of temperature increase. So we are exceptionally vulnerable in terms of temperature increases. Um, 2019, uh, in the western half of Southern Africa, was the warmest calendar year. Uh, annual average temperature was the highest in the recorded history across Angola, Namibia, the Northern Cape, and into the Western Cape, and a little bit um, also far above normal in the east, but of course we've had some rain the last two months. Else the records would have been broken in this part of the country as well. So um, heat waves, uh, with the risks these bring to agriculture, uh, to the livestock industry, but also directly to human comfort and mortality, and that risk, uh, it's such a clear risk, but it's also not sufficiently communicated. 